Hello, Scooby-Doo fans! Welcome to my Season 2 Episode 3 review of the new Scooby-Doo movies. So last time I began my 2024 Halloween special with my Season 2 Episode 2 review of the new Scooby-Doo movies. I hope uh, you guys enjoyed that video. But of course today, I'll be covering Season 2 Episode 3 of the new Scooby-Doo movies titled Mystery in Persia, which was released on September 22nd, 1973. The short synopsis of the episode is... Scooby and the gang, along with Genie and Babu, help a prince battle the evil spirit that was let out of a bottle. But who did it, and why? So today's guest stars are Genie and Babu. Who are Genie and Babu? Well, they're main characters from an animated spinoff of a 60s sitcom called I Dream of Genie. Um, so, unless if you're someone from that time frame, or if you're familiar with Hanna-Barbera history, you probably aren't too familiar with Genie Babu, uh, um, as characters. Unless if you're, like, familiar with all of Hanna-Barbera's library of characters, you know, the animated spin-off show itself, or just the original sitcom from the 60s. But, for those who don't know who Genie and Babu is, here's just a quick rundown of who they are. So Genie and Babu are fictional genies. The first one, Genie, appeared in both the original sitcom I Dream of Genie, as their names in the title, and of course the animated Hanna-Barbera show, just simply titled Genie. Babu, however, was just created for the animated Hanna-Barbera spinoff, uh, Genie. So when it comes to the main character of Genie, Genie first appeared in the sitcom I Dream of Genie, which ran for five seasons and two television films. From 1965 to 1969 was when the five seasons aired, and she returned for two TV movies in 1985 and 1991. Essentially, the show was an American fantasy sitcom, from what I understand. It was about a 2,000-year-old genie falling in love with an astronaut. After the original show had concluded its run, Hanna-Barbera decided to produce the animated spin-off of the property, but it had no direct r relation to the original sitcom. The only relation was the name, Genie, and the main character of Genie. Genie was the only character that, you know, moved forward from the first to the to the second one. Uh, but obviously she did have some minor changes, I believe. N not just in voice, but I believe in age as well. So in 1973, there was a show, uh, the animated Hanna-Barbera show called, simply titled Genie ran for one season and 16 episodes. Now, unlike the original show, this had a different story or plot line, whatever you want to call it, than the than the original. It tried to appeal to younger audiences, obviously, because Hanna-Barbera were more geared toward, despite being a family-friendly network, they were mere, more geared towards the kids. And so it makes sense that they didn't want to have adults be the center of the show, like in the original sitcom, but rather it be teenagers so in this version it was about a high school student named Corey anders Corey anders found genie's bottle while surfing and he became the master to both genie and babu who was genie's junior apprentice and the show was basically kind of like an high school archie style you, you know an archie style kind of high school drama or sitcom whatever you want to call it where Corey and uh you know would get into shenanigans in his in his high school or just as in his normal life as like a teenager with genie and babu and another character which we'll about to which we're about to mention 
But Corey would essentially just try to do his best to try and hide Genie Babu's identities. Uh, Genie, I believe, would pap. Genie was portrayed as a 16 year old girl in this version. So she would try to be. Uh, so it wasn't. So people would assume that she was the same age as Corey. And, you know, was just a human walking around in, her high, in their high school. And the only ones aware of their true identities as genie, you know, as genies, was their friend, was Henry, was Corey's only friend, Henry Gloop, who was aware of genie and Babu's identity as genies. And like I said, genie was portrayed as 16 years old in, in this cartoon, and she was also portrayed as having a love for Corey. She had a romantic attraction or a, a, a emotional and romantic attraction to her master. Um, so it was s somewhat similar in that way to the original sitcom, at least from what I read. You know, it still kept, kept the romantic elements of that original show and carried it to this one. Just kind of more high school teen romantic and less adult romantic. Now let's get into the four main characters of the show. And the four main characters that are in this crossover episode. So there's, of course, the titular character of Jeannie. Jeannie was voiced by Julie McWhirter and not Barbara Eden, who was the original Jeannie. Barbara Eden played Jeannie in the original sitcom and all the five seasons, two television movies. Julie McWhirter voiced Jeannie in this cartoon. So Julie McWhirter was born on October 12th, 1947 in Indianapolis, Indiana, and is still alive today at 76 years old. And also, the original genie, Barbara Eden, was born on August 23rd, 1931 in Tucson, Arizona, and is also still alive today at 93 years old. So both genie actors are still alive to this day. Corey Anders is voiced by the incredibly talented Mark Hamill. Yes, Mark Hamill, who's in Star Wars, voices Joker in the Batman the Animated Series. This was both before those. This was in 1973. This was actually his first animated voice role um so it's actually cool this is also the first time mark ha hamill is a guest star on scooby-doo this will not be the last time we see mark hamill in the scooby-doo franchise we will see him in other occasions so of course mark hamill was born on september 25th 1951 in oakland california and is of course still alive today at 73 years old Henry Gloop was voiced by Bob Hastings, who was born on April 18th, 1925 in Brooklyn, New York. And he sadly passed away on June 30th, 2014 in Burbank, California. And then finally, you have Babu, who was voiced by Joe Besser, who was born on August 12th, 1907 in St. Louis, Missouri. And he unfortunately passed away on March 1st, 1988 in North Hollywood, California. And fun fact for you, I believe I mentioned this in the season one, season one, episode one review, the new Scooby-Doo movies. Joe Mess, Joe Besser was a member of the Three Stooges. So this is a, that's actually interesting that one of the Three Stooges members actually voices Babu, uh, but yet he didn't voice any Three Stooges character in the Three Stooges crossovers, which is interesting. So at the time this episode aired, Genie and Babu had just started their animated show. I think they were at their third episode by this point. I think the third episode of their show had just aired around this same date as this one. The Genie show lasted from September, I think, to December of 73. So the show had just begun and it was airing uh, concurrently with this crossover episode. As per usual, I'll be watching season two, episode three of the new Scooby Doo movies on the new Scooby Doo movies. The Almost Complete Collection. This uh, this complete collection has Almost Complete Collection has every episode of the new Scooby Doo movies minus the Adams Family episode. However, you can go on HBO Max for a better quality episode, so you no longer have to go digging online for that. But if you want to know why you know it was gone for so long, I explain it more in my episode three review of season one. Now, what's my experience with Genie and Babu? I don't, I'm not really fans of them. I've never really seen anything involving them um, outside of this episode. I've never seen the original Genie sitcom, I Dream of Genie. And I've never seen the animated Hanna-Barbera show, uh, Genie, um, that this, you know, these characters are from. So I'm completely unfamiliar with them as characters. Um, 
you know, maybe one day I might pursue them. Obviously, they're not someone you would think of to cross over with Scooby-Doo as it's more magic based, you know, high school drama based. It's mm, sure. These are like high school kids and the Scooby gang are high school age as well. But there are definitely interesting choices for Scooby uh, for a Scooby crossover as there's a lot of magic involved which is not something uh, something we see later on, of course, but it was interesting at this time that they decided to have, like, actual ma magical genies be guest stars on a Scooby-Doo episode, and it was felt more like we were on an adventure with, you know, these, uh, with these genies. In fact, I would say this episode, I don't know if this is true or not, but because I haven't seen the Genie show, but it feels like what an episode of Genie would probably be like, because this episode doesn't really have the feel of a Scooby-Doo mystery. This feels more like if, let's say, it was a Genie episode and Scooby-Doo was just tagging along for the ride. That's what this episode really feels like, and it's interesting that they chose them as guest stars. But yeah, I mean, I'm not familiar with them as guest stars or Hanna-Barbera or their Hanna-Barbera incarnations. I don't know their original show, so this is a new experience for me. Maybe you guys can, you know, tell me your experience with Genie and Babu. Do you, are you a fan of them as guest stars? Do you like the original show? I've never watched it, so maybe you could tell me more about that. Or do you like the Hanna-Barbera spinoff, you know, or do you like both incarnations? Or are you just like me and... You know, not very familiar with them, but, you know, and I've only seen them in this crossover episode. I'd be interested on your thoughts on that. So, yeah, let me know uh, your experience with the guest stars of this episode. Now, as far as this episode's reception goes, I don't really hear this episode really talked about when it comes to the new Scooby-Doo movies episodes. I'm assuming it's considered decent by a lot of people or at least liked in somewhat, but I don't hear it talked about a lot so that kind of tells me that this isn't necessarily a standout episode for a lot of people um it seems like a, you know unless if maybe you're a, a big genie fan and a big scooby fan maybe you might love this but unless if you're one well, one of those two you probably you know aren't you know this is probably like a new experience for you and you just like you know you don't view it as this big event as some others may view it but yeah i mean i don't hear it discussed enough it's not really an episode i hear talked about a lot uh so i'm assuming it's i've heard it praised a little bit but not really enough like some people somewhat like it but it when you if you were to ask someone like episodes that they love uh, from the new Scooby-Doo movies, I guarantee you this episode would not be on their list at all. Uh, despite it being a Hanna-Barbera character crossover, they're not viewed very highly, it seems like. Well, they're not viewed badly, but they're just not talked about that much. So that tells me that this episode didn't really make an impression on a lot of people. But maybe I'm wrong. Let's, you know, do I... So do I think this episode is good and maybe an underrated gem? Do I think it's worse and do I think it's bad and not talked about for a reason? Or do I agree with the masses that maybe it's decent and not talked about for a reason because maybe it didn't make an impression? Well, let's find out, shall we? So let's take a look at the episode to see whether I think it is a good or bad episode of the new Scooby Doo movies. Just as a side note before we begin, we have another fucking error in the title sequence, but not a name error. It's just Genie and Babu are way off to the side of the flashlight than they should be. They're not in the center of the flashlight. They're way off to the side. So the animators were either really exhausted or just didn't give a shit because they just fucking left it in there and thought nobody would notice. Well, I certainly noticed, and it was very jarring. Also, fun fact, this is the only other episode besides the last episode with Josie and the Pussycats that this has a red title card. The rest of them are blue. Anyways, the episode begins with the Mystery Inc. gang driving along the countryside, and Shaggy notices how deserted the road is and is, of course, very hungry. They see Corey Anders and Henry Gloop driving along on their motorcycle. Soon, Genie is following along, flying overhead in a sitting position. Scooby tries to imitate her magical ponytail with his tail, also like trying to imitate that you know she's flying to the gang, but the gang aren't getting it. And then the mystery machine crashes and the rest of the gang finally recognizes Genie and her friends. 
which I have no idea why the Scooby gang would know Jeannie and their fr her friends at all. Like, I don't know how pop... Like, I wouldn't assume Jeannie is popular in the Hanna-Barbera universe like Josie and the Pussycats. Like, Josie and the Pussycats, I get. They're a band. I would expect the Scooby gang to know them. But Jeannie, for all intents and purposes, like, in the show, it's implied that... It's said that Jeannie and Babu's uh, identities as genies are hidden by Corey and henry so if that's true why would the gang know them at all that doesn't make any sense and why would they know Corey and henry surely they'd just be two random dudes passing by on a motorcycle scooby and shaggy in an amorous daze call you know come to genie's aid and defend her when genie apologizes that it was her fault for distracting them and shaggy and scooby are like no no and they blame fred for the accident and call the mystery machine an old truck which honestly i kind of find funny that shaggy and scooby blame fred i honestly think it's also you know fair because fred has in a lot of situations been the cause for why the mystery machine has you know failed in certain situations either not checking up on gas or being and jiggle problem sometimes it's not his fault but other times i'm like come on fred you got to keep an eye on your van so i, I kind of find it good funny but also true that fred you know is blamed for this because he should have been paying attention i don't know what he was doing but he should have fucking paid attention i know genie and their friends were you know genie would be a distracting thing but pay attention to the road fred I also find it weird that it's implied in the scene, or at least directly said, that Shaggy and Scooby are, in uh, you know, enamored by Genie. You know, they have a romantic or you know attraction to Genie. Scooby, I get because for the rest of the episode, you're gonna hear me cringe at a lot of things that Scooby does because spoiler alert warning: I don't like that they try to force a romantic attraction between a dog and a Genie. It's weird, it's gross, and it's and it's honestly cringeworthy. And it makes the episode hard to watch in places. And anytime Scooby did, you know, any of you know, any sort of romantic thing with Genie, it always, you know, it always took me out of the episode because it was so distracting. But with Shaggy, yeah, Shaggy has chemistry with Genie, but I think I never really get a sense that there's any sort of romantic interest from Shaggy to Genie. So, I don't know why Daphne and Velma say that Shaggy, well, Shaggy and Scooby are in love. Like, Scooby, they're right about. But Shaggy, I don't think he's in love with Genie. I just think, like, he's being, uh, he's just, you know, he's just so fond meaning with her and may, and just has good chemistry with her. I, I just don't see any implication that Shaggy was enamored by Genie. Because if he was, why would it only be in that one scene? Surely Shaggy would be like Scooby and be you know, all over Genie for the rest of the episode, right? Well, that's not what happens. So to me, I just think that was maybe, like, the characters, like, being wrong about something. I think Daphne and Velma just misread the situation. And they're right about Scooby. But I think Shaggy was just coming here to, to her defense because, technically, you know, Fred hasn't really been called out for a lot of, you know, his, you know, mystery machine uh, accidents, shall we call it. So, I think Shaggy was like, yeah, you know, it's not your fault Fred, like, does that, you know, you know, he always, he's, because he never gets blamed for anything, like, he always, like, he always forgets to put gas in the mystery machine, or, like, he, he doesn't pay attention to the road and crashes the van, and like I said, sometimes it's not his fault, but other times it certainly is, and he doesn't get called out for it, and... You know what, Shaggy was being picked on earlier by the rest of the group, and he gets picked on a bit later, so you know what, I I think Shaggy's has a valid point, and I think it's right for him that he, you know, call, rightfully calls out Fred for his mistake, because he should have fucking been paying attention to the road. Anyways, she magically removes the mystery machine from the mud, and Shaggy asks her to sap up some food for them. And so, she asks, you know, Corey if they can, and he says yes, and she instantly creates a picnic for everyone. Sandwiches then disappear from Shaggy and Scooby's hands, and Babu appears standing in a potato salad. Fred asks Genie's gang to join them, and at first they're not sure about it, but then they're like, yeah, why not? Let's, you know, let's just, they don't have anything better to do, so why not? Genie then causes Scooby to float along with her because, you know, she asks Scooby, hey, would you like to come out here and float with me? And he's like, yeah. Obviously, Scooby being enamored by Genie, of course he would say yes. 
But when Babu tries to do the same with Shaggy, he makes the whole mystery machine ascend to the sky, and Genie puts it back on the ground. And they blame Shaggy for being in that predicament, which, to be fair, like, Shaggy should have probably said no, but, you know, he was trying to be nice, and was trying to, like, not be mean to Babu, so he was trying to be nice and be like, are you sure it's safe? And he didn't even say yes, like, he just said well, um... And, you know, he hadn't decided yet, and Babu just assumed that he said yes, or was like, uh, so, technically that's not really Shaggy's fault, you know, which did, I think they're just projecting on him, because Shaggy didn't say no immediately. Well, I'm sorry, Fred, Daphne, Velma, would you have done the same thing? Would you have been mean to, towards Babu and say no? I don't think you would, so let's not, pre let's not pretend like Shaggy's the problem here. They all stop at a fork in the road, and then Babu receives a message from the great Haji for Genie to come to Persia to help a friend of his named Prince Abin. At first, they're all bummed because they're not going to be able to spend any time together because Genie has to go to Persia. But then, Cory comes up with the idea and says, Genie, why don't we all go? Why not? And so they do go all go to Persia, all the way from the United States, which is crazy. And I think this is the first episode that doesn't take place in the United States, which is interesting. Genie transported them all the way to Persia. You know, that, that's a long way home. And then in the next scene, they are in ancient Persia, and unbeknownst to them, a man and an evil genie are plotting against the great Haji and his, you know, help, Genie. The gang arrives in front of an old palace. The gate opens by itself, and Shaggy and Scooby start running when Genie magically brings them back to the palace. Inside, they check several doors, but don't find anybody, so they decide to sleep over in some of the rooms, as Genie even says that Persians are known for their hospitality, so they feel like, you know, there's no harm in doing it. Bit weird, but if they are known for their hospitality, then that's fine. In his room, Scooby sees a veiled ghost in a closet who comes after him, then after Babu, and then after Shaggy. The way this happens is, is when Shaggy goes to brush his teeth, Scooby checks the closet for anything when Babu asks Scooby to check, and Scooby finds the veiled ghost. They both run to the bathroom to get Shaggy. Scooby disappears after Babu says his yapple-dapple little catchphrase, and then Babu tells Shaggy that there's a ghost in there, and then there's a funny little shot of Shaggy's hair going up, and he just says ghost, and it's really funny. And then, you know, he's Babu, you know, Shaggy asks Sco uh, Babu where Scooby is, and Babu says his catchphrase again, and, you know, uh, saying that that's what he said before, and he lets the veiled ghost into the bathroom. And so Babu and Shaggy run to the, uh, under the bed to try to hide, and Shaggy asks Babu to try to make him disappear. So Babu does try to make him disappear, but only makes the bed they're hiding under disappear. He then calls for Genie, who makes the ghost disappear, and Shaggy thinks it was all a joke, but Genie says that it wasn't a joke, but a dangerous game being played by someone unknown. I think this bedroom chase scene is quite funny. I love, you know, uh, the, the little uh, moment of Shaggy's hair going up and him saying ghost, uh, the, them, you know, hiding under the bed, all the magical hijinks, you know, it, it's, it's a lot of fun. And I also think it's I also think it's a good dynamic. You know, I do like Shaggy and Scooby's dynamic with Genie and Babu. They seem to have a good dynamic in this episode, so I like that too. What's in the closet, Scooby? Nothing. Nothing? Something? Oh, you're a genius. 
genie, Babu. Do something. Genie! Now you're gonna get it. <laughs> I knew it all the time. Somebody was playing a harmless joke. <laughs> it was not a joke, Shaggy, and definitely not harmless. <clears throat> Whoever was behind it is playing a dangerous game. Like I'm sure glad you're on our team. I think you will be safe for tonight. <clears throat> what happened to your bed? I made a little mistake. It wasn't his fault, Genie. Uh -uh. I'm sure it wasn't. There! Now I must see if my master is all right. Henry is grooming himself in a mirror, and then his reflection begins acting funny and moving differently than he is. And then he gets scared by it, and he tries to explain to Corey, who doesn't understand the situation, and just thinks that Henry is seeing things, and uh, he even makes fun of him at certain points, which is hilarious. I actually... Mark Hamill did a great job with Corey because Corey was quite funny in a few scenes, especially with Henry. Their dynamic was pretty funny. Um, if I ever do watch the show, I hope, you know, Mark Hamill's as funny as he is in that show as he is in this episode because he was pretty good. I'm not going to lie. I did find him pretty good as Corey in this episode. And Corey had funny moments with Henry in that bedroom. I do find it weird that, you know, because it seemed like Corey was watching Henry, you know, brush his hair, you know, groom his hair in the mirror. So I am I find it weird that Corey didn't see any of the weirdness that was going on with the mirror, that it was not mimicking the movements of, you know, Henry. Uh, but OK, we'll just go along with that. He then tries to demonstrate, uh, you know, to Corey and Jeannie what happened with the mirror but now nothing really strange happens and it just is back to normal and it mimics his movements. And they think he was just only imagining it and just scared himself. I love the little line that Corey gives like, you know, that uh, Henry, combed, get, Henry combing his hair gave him a nightmare, which is fucking hilarious. Mark Hamill's got some great win this episode, I'll say that as Corey. A vulture then flies around the palace and then everybody suddenly disappears from their beds, all landing in a room full of doors. Save for Genie and Babu, who are floating and, you know, sleeping on top of the beds. Genie and Babu look all, look all over the palace to go find, you know, everybody. And they end up outside of the, you know, one of the pyramids where they... Where Genie senses her master, or Cory's uh, presence in a nearby pyramid. But before that, landing in the room, Shaggy thinks that it's all just a dream... And Henry blames, uh, you know, the, the mirror version of himself... To the confusion of everyone else, uh, Daphne and Velma, you know, are confused by it. And Corey is so done at this point because he's like, look, I'll explain later. Because he's so f he's so annoyed with it because, like, Henry is keeping him up with this, you know, mirror story. And he just is, like, so fed up with it. And it's just fucking funny, like, that, you know, how how Corey's so done with, like, this 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 story of, like, Henry afraid of his of a mirror version of himself they all then try to open some doors but they only find a strong wind and a monstrous hand genie then magically opens one of the doors from the outside and shaggy and scooby who had just been convinced to try to open another door fell out of the door you know they were trying to get them you know uh you know fred tried i think one door with possibly Corey. I think Daphne and Velma tried one, uh, you know, so they asked, you know, Shaggy and Scooby to try one. Shaggy and Scooby didn't want to do it, but they were just nearby the door and fell through it. Everyone is now reunited and are then welcomed to Zenda by Abin, Abin's uncle, Abdullah, the man we earlier we saw earlier with the djinn. So they make it pretty obvious who the villain is, which is a problem in this episode and something I don't like in an episode when they reveal the villain way too fucking early. Who appears above the pyramid they, you know, just got out of. In Prince Abin's palace, Abin explains his problem to the gangs. And strange things have, he says strange things have been happening, mainly ghostly voices in the night. Yet, if Abin doesn't stay in the palace for one year, he can't become Sultan of, you know, Zenda. He says legend has it that an evil jinn who was imprisoned by Abin's ancestor, is making the noise, indicating that someone must have released 
that gin if some if you know these problems are occurring again shaggy and scooby henry and babu all hear the voices and take off running around the palace and scare each other from around a corner and i do like the scene where you know they're all hearing the voices and shaggy and scooby henry and babu are done with these with these scary stuff and are fucking they bolt the hell out of there also we get another funny scene of hair you know going up but instead of shaggy's it's daphne and velma who you know could uh whose hair like goes up after fear when they're like that must have been the wind right you know velma and velma's like right daphne i hope and then they're and then they hear the voices again and it fucks them fucking scares their hair up and it's so funny um i also kind of like the dynamic between shaggy and henry which is interesting but Henry does bounce off Shaggy well, uh, you know, so there's a lot of good chemistry in, with certain characters in this episode, and Shaggy definitely bounced off of Henry in a lot, in, you know, during this sequence, especially. What's up, what's up? Probably just the wind, right, Velma? Right, Daph? I hope. Ah! <laughs> You are, Ben, but we're leaving. Right on. Me too. Yaggle Dapple. Scooby Shaggy, wait for me. Babu, your turban. Thanks, Genie. Jadal the evil Jin appears, scaring Scooby as well as the others, and they run, and while they're running, Babu splits literally in half, uh, you know, during twice during the um chase sequence and uncle abdullah encourages abin to leave the palace because of course he's the villain so of course and jadal chases the four around the palace and every trick babu tries to perform is a blunder they hear jadal and babu disappears and so shaggy scooby and henry escape by disguising themselves in robes similar to the veiled ghost from earlier they look like you know two veiled men on a camel heck even the there's a woman that's a uh you know in uh, the kitchen or something that's also veiled too but i like the palace chasing uh all the magical hijinks the chemistry with shaggy and henry the fact that henry and shaggy have the same running animation is also interesting and uh, scooby uh escaping jadal's clutches but because he went in one of the oil barrels just a lot of fun little hijinks and you know shaggy Coming up with an idea to fool the ghost, uh, well, not really ghost, but the djinn, the evil djinn, by, you know, dis by him and Henry disguising in these veals while they're on top of, you know, Scooby uh, as a make-believe camel. <laughs> Yikes! When Babu splits, he really splits! No sweat, Shag. He's okay. Hey, did anybody see my... Oh, there I am! Yapple-japple! He's still there! Let's hide! No, Scooby, not in that one! There's oil in there! Really? Here he comes! Yapple-japple! Can't you stay together? I'm so nervous I can't think! Hey, wait for us! Oh man, like I can't take another step. I'm pooped. Where to? If I levitate you over the floor, maybe I could pull you. Uh oh. You'd better try, Babu, or else we're finished. Okay. Uh, but be careful, please. Remember what happened before. Here goes. Yapple Dapple! Yeah. Nice work, Babu. That's the old levitator. Oh, don't worry. I'll get you down. All I have to do is. Oh, darn. I'm just gonna have to practice more. Where are you. <laughs> we gotta get out of here. Right. <coughs> Goodbye, all. Think of something, Shaggy, quick. I'm crying, I'm crying. This time, 
you will not escape me. <laughs> Malik Kalom! <laughs> Give me a hand, Henry. <laughs> You're welcome. Let's disappear before that big guy comes back. They smell food and run to the kitchen and begin eating out of a kettle. A woman then shows up and shows them that it's laundry in the kettle. And the rest of the gang enters after they go to look for the four of them. And of course, they start with the kitchen. And they were right. Jadal then appears out of the fire, freezes everyone, and then imprisons Jeannie in a bottle as he had been in prison for 10,000 years. And then he disappears with her. And Aben just then, then realizes just now that she is a real genie after Corey reveals to him that genie and Babu are genies, real genies. Aben then offers to leave the palace and give up the sultan position. Um, of course, the gang tell, you know, uh, Corey's like, no way, you know, don't. He does it because he wants to, he's hopefully he, it will save genie. But, you know, Corey is like, no way, you know, Jeannie wouldn't want that, you know, we'll find another way. And Daphne's will, like, maybe you should think about it anyway. And what I love is a comment uh, when he says, can I be less brave than a woman? And Shaggy's like, I could. And Scooby's like, me too. And I love the honesty from Shaggy and Scooby. They're just like, yeah, we, we're character, we're cowards. We don't care. We don't care. We could be coward, coward, more cowardly than women. We don't care. Um, of course, Scooby gets bribed with Scooby Snacks, and Shaggy sticks around because uh, Scooby's his pal. And you know what? Shaggy's had good chemistry with Genie throughout the episode, so I'm sure he wouldn't it wouldn't let weigh well on his conscience if he didn't go help the, them. But yeah, he sticks by his pal. And then everybody searches the palace, um, with Shaggy, Scooby, and Babu taking the lead, and Fred, Daphne, and Velma following behind with you know Prince Aubin. Henry and you know Corey. I also find it funny that when Scooby stops, Babu like falls on top of him and squishes Scooby, and it's fucking hilarious. I laugh my ass off all the time. Shaggy, Scooby, and Babu find a watch the spot painted on the floor, and then a section of the floor carries them down to the cellar. The others then see the spot and are carried up to a room Abin never even knew about. So they go up. While, the, while Shaggy and Scooby and Babu go down to the cellar. Henry sees a window with a camel walking in the desert outside and thinks it's a very realistic picture. He leans too far and falls out. Then suddenly the whole room tilts and they all fall out, landing in Jadal's cave. Thelma finds a thousand-year-old bottle and Aben gives it to her. And meanwhile, Babu, Shaggy, and Scooby hear Genie and think it's their ghost. Which is actually kind of funny the way Shaggy and Scooby react, saying, We're not here. Which is kind of funny. Of course, they realize that it's not Jeannie's ghost, but it's just her imprisoned in the bottle. They see her imprisoned in the bottle in a hole in the wall, but is it protected by an invisible shield. Shaggy asks if Babu can do anything. He says he can't. Shaggy says if they can break it down. Jeannie says no. Um, Scooby then try, uh, howls after Jeannie tells them that she would be stuck there for 10,000 years, and he ends up breaking the bottle... And Jeannie is now free and kisses Scooby on the cheek, which is, ugh, just weird. I know it's like a, a form of, you know, nice, uh, you know, being nice to your dog, but I don't think even I would kiss my dog on the cheek. I just, you know, I just hug him, maybe, you know, pet him, but I would, uh, I don't know, maybe I'm just different, but I, I don't know. It's just weird seeing, like, scenes like that where Scooby's licking and kissing Jeannie on the cheek. And Jeannie does the same. It's just, it's just weird. It's gross. Like, it, it just it just feels wrong. Soon after that, she senses her master again and finds him and the others on the other side of a solid rock wall. Jeannie then recognizes Velma's bottle as being 10,000 years old. Jadal then appears and duels magically with Jeannie. But Jeannie, knowing all his tricks, thanks to the great Haji telling her, defeats him, forcing him back into the bottle. Fred and Jeannie point out that whoever released him was the big master and therefore the cause of all the trouble. Jeannie makes him appear, and of course it ends up being Uncle Abdullah. He felt the power and wealth of the Sultan and was rightly his, and because, you know, Aben, he said Aben's father ruled with love and not by force as a Sultan should. 
So yeah, basically he wanted the power of the Sultan. He wanted to take over the palace and rule by force. And, you know, Jadal served his purpose as well because he could also get his revenge on, you know, the great Haji. So their their goals and motives li lined up well. Genie says it's not her place to judge mortals, so she imprisons him with the she imprisons him in the bottle with Jadal for the great Haji to decide what to do with these two men to take you know to take care of these two men and what their fates will be. Shaggy and Scooby then eat out of the kettle again, but this time instead of laundry, it is soap. The episode ends with Scooby hiccuping bubbles. I'm going to give season two, episode three of the new Scooby Doo movies three stars out of five. So yeah, once again, we have another decent episode uh, of, um, of the second season of the new Scooby-Doo movies. That's now three episodes in a row that have had three stars. And yeah, this season has started off relatively safe, relatively decent, like, you know, middle, a uh, pretty middle of the road season. But obviously there's still a couple more episodes to go. So hopefully we will get at least uh, an upgrade, like a good, a good episode but for right now, the episode has, you know, the episode is decent, and this season so far has been pretty, you know, it's been okay. You know, it's been decent, it's not been relatively amazing, but it's not been relatively bad either. So they've been, they've played it quite safe so far. Um, I have more negatives than I do positives, so I'll start off with the positives of the episode first before I get into what doesn't work for me in this episode and what holds it to this three star rating and makes it middle of the road makes it average starting with the positives my first one is that i thought fred was a good leader in this episode so fred like the last episode had some shared leadership in this episode him Corey, and genie kind of shared the the leadership role of this episode he did have moments to shine his leadership so i wouldn't say fred was a complete bust and wasn't too bad I thought Fred was still a good enough uh, competent leader and led the way when he needed to, but obviously he wasn't the, the de facto leader of this episode. Um, probably because it was more a genie-centric mystery or adventure and not so much a Scooby-Doo mystery slash adventure where genie's tagging along. So I guess that makes sense as to why the leadership was shared, but I'm still glad that they gave Fred some type of leadership in this episode. And, you know, for what it's worth, he did play off of Corey well as well. I think him and Corey had a good dynamic throughout a couple scenes. Um, so I, I thought Fred overall uh, was good in this episode. And then there's Shaggy. So Shaggy, I thought, was the best member of the gang in this episode. I thought he was utilized the best out of all the members of the gang in this episode. He was his usual funny, cowardly self, you know, he was quite cowardly, he had a lot of good humorous moments, and I thought Shaggy had great chemistry with Henry, Babu, and Genie. I think there was a couple, there was a couple scenes where he played off of Henry well, they even had the same running animation. Um, Babu definitely was very attached to Shaggy and Scooby, probably because of, you know, being a bumbling, you know buffoon of a of a genie i guess he gravitated towards the comedic relief of the gang and i thought genie had good chemistry with shaggy as well not romantic chemistry as i think the way i think daphne and velma read the situation wrong i didn't sense any sort of romantic chemistry between shaggy and genie i don't think shaggy looked at genie that way i don't think genie looked at shaggy that way I do think they were forcing something with Scooby and Genie, but I think with Shaggy, I think Shaggy and Genie just had a natural uh, friend kind of chemistry. Like, you know, the, just like what what you would normally see out of guest stars. Like, they just played off each other well, and there were a couple scenes where Shaggy did play off of Genie well, and I, I thought overall he had, you know, good chemistry with, you know, Henry, Babu, and Genie. I think all of them had, you know, played off of Shaggy well. Then we have the guest stars of the episode, Genie and Babu. How were Genie and Babu? I thought Genie and Babu were good in this episode. They were good guest stars. I will preface this by saying that I did kind of find Babu a little bit annoying at points. He did have some funny moments, but I think what saved him is that he had chemistry with Shaggy and Scooby, as well as Henry, you know, in his own group, and Genie. 
I think because he played off of everyone else so well, I think that's what helped. But I definitely can... I definitely see Babu as very annoying, and I could totally see someone else being like, he's an annoying character in this episode, because he is a bit annoying in this episode. I'm not going to lie, he has his annoying bits, but he does also have some funny moments, too, with Shaggy, Scooby, and even Henry, so... But yeah, I think... Yeah, the Genie and Corey were good leaders for the mystery, and I think it helped that they also wanted to help solve the mystery, and that's because this was a genie-centric mystery slash adventure. I think this, like I said in the beginning of this review, this feels more like what I would expect a genie episode to be and the Scooby gang tagging along for it. Because it doesn't feel so much that Genie's tagging along for a Scooby mystery. It feels like Scooby's tagging along for a genie adventure to... Uh, uh, you know, in this episode. But they did want to help solve the mystery, and that's because the mystery was revolved around Genie and Babu and, their, and, and you know, Henry and Corey. And obviously the Scooby gang are good Samaritans and are the, you know, the focus, you know, are the main characters of the, of the show. So, of course, they're going to be involved in it as well. Um, but, yeah, I think, you know... Because they, that was good that they wanted, you know, that the mystery revolved around them. And they wanted to help solve it. And I also think they had good chemistry with the Scooby gang and with each other. With Jeannie, I thought in her own group, I thought she played off of her own group well. She had moments with Babu. She had moments with her master, Corey. And that makes sense because, like I said in the beginning, they have, you know, it's said in the show that they have, Jeannie has some romantic feelings towards Corey. And she she has tiny moments with Henry, not much, but she does have tiny moments with him. Um, and I think with the Scooby Gang, I think Genie plays off a of Shaggy and Scooby well. Now I'll get on to you know the whole Scooby Genie thing later and how I don't like it. The reason I say the chemistry is still good is because when they're not doing the whole lovey dovey thing, Genie can have some small moments of good chemistry with Scooby when there's not forced romance. And like I said, Jeannie has fantastic chemistry with Shaggy. I think, you know, that's that's the kind of chemistry, you know, uh, you know that that's the kind of chemistry I, you know, enjoyed more in this episode and what I'm looking for in the episode. Not that I'm, a, I'm opposed to any romantic chemistry, but they keep trying to force romantic chemistry with Scooby and human guest stars. And it's like, no, don't do that. If you're going to try to force a romantic thing, do it human-human or animal-animal. Don't try to do one and the other. Like, that's just weird. And I'll get on to a little later why I don't like, you know, why I'm not big on Scooby in this episode and his whole, how they, how, it, you know, the whole dynamic between, you know, the whole forced romantic aspect of him and Genie. But for what it's worth, when, when those cringy moments didn't happen... Jeannie was okay with Scooby, but I definitely think she was really good with Shaggy. I think Babu played off of, uh, you know, his own team well with uh, Jeannie and Henry. He didn't really have any moments with Corey. Uh, and with the Scooby gang, I thought Babu played off of Shaggy and Scooby well, which I guess makes sense. They were trying to pair up the comedic relief with, you know, with each other. But whereas Shaggy and Scooby are actually funny and entertaining, Babu is quite annoying and bubbling and not that entertaining to watch at all. He's actually very annoying in a lot of bits. But, you know, Shaggy and Scooby help elevate him a little bit and make his scenes less bad. So, yeah, I mean, overall, I think the guest stars, you know, were great. Genie, Babu, along with Corey and Henry, all did at least something, you know, worthwhile as guest stars. They were good leaders, they wanted to help solve the mystery, and they had good chemistry with each other and the Scooby gang. So they hit all the right beats, and that's what I want out of the guest stars. So guest stars were good in this episode. thought Genie Babu did a great job guest starring in this episode. I found the motive of the villains to actually be quite unique and fresh. I really enjoyed the motive uh, a lot. I thought it was new and interesting. So essentially... Uh, Uncle Abdullah wanted to take over the palace as the Sultan. 
and rule with force uh, along with, you know, the wealth of the Sultan. And Jadal, who was, you know, the monster of the episode or the ghost, whatever you want to call it, the djinn, the evil djinn, not, was also, not only uh, would also get his revenge on the great Hachi at the same time. So, like, it was good because, like, despite them having two different goals, it ended up aligning and actually helping each other out. Plus, technically, uh, Abdullah freed, um, you know, Jadal. So Jadal was a slave to Abdullah, but he, but Abdullah gave him the opportunity to get revenge on the Great Haji, specifically, you know, the Great Haji's help, which is Genie and Babu. Uh, so I think that was good. That you know, I I found the motive to be good because it's somewhat. It's one is trying to take power and wealth. He wants the power and wealth and wants to be a sort of like a dictator. Like he wants to rule by force, not by love, like he, like Prince Abed and his father. And the evil Jin just, you know, just wants to get revenge on the great Haji and Genie for imprisoning him in the bottle. And I think for, you know, a mix of, you know, having a mix of revenge and power and wealth as motives that's something that i don't think we've had before in scooby we've had revenge motives but not very often and i i just like and and i just like the whole combination that this motive does and it's just something unique and fresh that we hadn't seen yet before um most scooby-doo motives are about land and money and while yes there is wealth involved it's clear that Abdullah, it, he his main objective was he wanted Prince Abin out of there so he can be the Sultan and he could rule with force. He wanted to have power. So that is a much different motive, you know, than land or money. He does get wealth as well, which is a nice incentive. And Jadal just gets his revenge on the great Haji and Chini. So, you know, they both get to serve, they both get what they want. And they get rewards at the end of it. And so I think the motive was good. It was unique. It was fresh. It was something we hadn't seen yet before in Scooby. And I think it was the best aspect of the villains in this episode. I think the motive really was a standout and one of the better Scooby-Doo motives. And finally, I found the setting to be good in this episode. I actually thought it was very unique and different. And... It was cool because, like, this was the first one, uh, episode not to take place in the United States, in the in the gang's home country, but them going to Persia and solving a mystery, and solving a mystery, and it was in the Palace of Zenda. Um, and I thought the Palace of Zenda was really cool. Like, you know, it was nice and big. You know, it had a lot of rooms to explore, which added variety because you didn't know what you were gonna see. You know, it was such a big, massive setting. You know, there was desert around. There was the pyramid. You know, there's there the, there's the palace itself with the multitude of rooms and the multitude of corridors and hallways. And there was a lot of variety to it. And then you have the caves below, you know, the caverns, whatever you want to call them. And it, and it just had a lot of variety to it and was something we hadn't seen before. And it was very unique and fresh and was a good Scooby-Doo setting. Now it's not a Scooby S setting, it's not particularly creepy, but I do like but I do think, you know, they did a good job with the setting and it was something unique and fresh that was done really well in the episode. I thought they executed it pretty well. But that's all I got for positive, so I think it's about time to get on to the negatives of the episode and what brings this episode down for me. Starting with the negatives, my first one is that I didn't like Daphne, Velma, and Scooby in this episode. I thought they were all very weak in this episode. When it comes to Daphne and Velma, I just think they didn't really do anything. They had no chemistry with any of Genie Babu's crew. They didn't really do play any sort of role in the mystery. They just were there, and yeah, they had scenes and moments here and there, but I, I, I didn't really see anything that stood out for them. I don't think Daphne and Velma had any sort of standout role or presence in the episode, and I just kind of felt like they were there and didn't really provide much to the episode's story. Now, as far as Scooby goes, like I said, my main issue with Scooby in this episode isn't Scooby... Well, it's not Scooby himself. It's the fact that this episode tries to force a romantic attraction between Scooby and Genie. 
I don't like it. You know, it's weird and it's hard to watch. Now, with the Sandy Duncan one, I think I said I didn't like that either. But the reason I gave it a pass was because it wasn't too bad. Like, Scooby wasn't kissing and going all up in, in Sandy Duncan's grill. You know, he just kind of was astounded by her, you know, you know, and, you know, kind of had hearts around his eyes. And, you know, obviously he was he had romantic feelings towards Sandy, but he never, like, tried to kiss her or go all over her or in like he did with Jeannie. And he kept his boundaries and they didn't try to push it too hard in that episode and didn't try to make it too much of a focus of Scooby's character. There was a lot more to Scooby's character in that episode, and so I felt like while it was weird and I didn't like it, I could forgive it. With this, I can't because it's the whole basis of Scooby's character in this episode, that he's just constantly romantically attracted and obsessed with Jeannie, and I just don't like it. Like, it's just weird. I don't want to see a forced human animal interaction i don't care if genie's a genie it's she's still somewhat human in a sense or a, a, if it's not an animal to animal even if she isn't human even like i don't want an animal and a genie to be to be romantically attracted it's just wrong it's just wrong and it's weird and anytime scooby tried to kiss genie or and you know or genie to try to kiss him back Granted, it wasn't on, like, the lips or anything. It was just on the cheeks. But it was still weird and gross. And it's just not what I want out of Scooby. I think he was too focused. He was too obsessed romantically with Genie. I would have been fine if he was, like, had good chemistry with Genie And just, you know, was... Or if he was romantically attracted to her. But, like, in the Sandy Duncan episode, they didn't make that his whole focus. And they just had, like, little scenes where... He looked at her a certain way, but he didn't like, he didn't make that his whole character and he didn't, you know, try to kiss her a bunch of times or anything. And yeah, it's just, it's just gross. It's weird. And it's not what I want Scooby to be doing in that epi kind of episode. So I hate to say it, but for me, Scooby just didn't work in this episode, mainly because of the writing. I didn't like what they made him do in this episode. They just made him too focused on Genie, too romantically attracted and lustful over Genie, and that's just not what I want to see Scooby doing. So unfortunately, yeah, I did find Scooby weak. Then we have the villain of the episode who was Jadal the Evil Jinn, who I thought was a weak and bland villain. I'll get on to Abdullah in a little bit as I consider him the outside of costume element. Because technically, this episode is an episode with a real monster. You know, it's a it's a gin. It's not fake. Um, but there is someone still pulling the strings, so there is that sort of element. But the monster is technically real in this episode. So Abdullah, I'm going to talk about in a little bit. You know, with the outside of costume element. But for the villain element, I'll stick with Jadal because he's really the heavy of this episode and the main villain. And the opposing force they go up against. Abdullah is just the one pulling the strings. Um, so I find him a weak and bland villain. Which is weird because despite him having powers. He wasn't scary or entertaining to watch. Nothing he did was scary. The scariest thing he did was those little ghostly voices that he did you know, to scare Abin. And it scared Shaggy, Scooby, Babu, and Henry out of the room that they were talking in. Other than that, he did nothing scary remotely at all. Like, there was nothing remotely scary about him at all. Nothing he did was scary at all. But he wasn't entertaining or fun to watch it at all either. You know, he wasn't like a fun, entertaining villain that was just fun to watch. He just was very weak and bland, and it's weird because he has powers, he has stuff that could make him a threat, and I understand the whole thing is to just try to scare Aben out of the palace, but still, like, I don't really feel any sort of danger or threat with him, you know, I don't really feel like he's taking it too seriously, he's not really trying to go to extra lengths to make sure Aben gets the message and says, hey, if you don't leave... I'm going to harm you, so to, or I'm gonna, or we're gonna do something really scary. Nothing he does is really scary or frightening. 
or creepy or eerie. But nothing he does is fun or entertaining either. So at the end, we end up with a weak and bland villain who, yeah, he has powers and he's supposed to be an evil chin, but he does... He just kind of doesn't really do anything that stands out. So, yeah, I just found the villain weak in this episode. You know, he certainly had the potential. He had, he was a real monster with real powers, but, you know, he just didn't do anything scary with them or anything fun or entertaining with them. He just was very weak and bland and boring. So for the outside of costume element, we have uh, Uncle Abdullah. So Uncle Abdullah, I found, was weak and bland as well. Mainly because he was just revealed as the villain way too early on in the episode. And he did nothing to stand out at all. Because he was revealed as the villain so early on, we never got a chance we never got a sense to see him play the game of, you know, pretend and, you know, be fooled by it. You know, because we were shown, you know, that he was the villain. But he did nothing to stand out either. Like, you know, there was only one scene where he was kind of acting like he didn't know what was going on. And that was the scene where Prince Aben and Uncle Abdullah were talking to them in that one room. But after that, he he was basically... Uh, he, he, didn't, he didn't hide who he, his true colors. He didn't hold back. Like, he made it clear who he was and what kind of person he was. And by doing that, I just kind of ruined, you know, the potential mystique that there could have been had he not been revealed as a villain too early on. So, yeah, Uncle Abdul is just weak and bland because he doesn't, he's revealed as the villain too early. And because he does nothing to stand out, he doesn't set up the villain, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't do anything memorable, you know, while, you know, you know, at all during the, uh, during the course of the episode. You know, because he never has a, he never is in any, because there's never a scene where he's not pretending to be a villain. You know, it's, there's not really a scene where you think this guy could not, you know, it's just, you know, a normal dude and isn't really, and it's just a suspect, you know. So, yeah, for me, Uncle Abdullah was weak, you know, he just, he just did nothing stand out at all and you know, did, and was just revealed as the villain way too early. And that not only messed up his character, but the whole suspect thing, because we don't get to, we don't get to pick it, you know, just, we don't get to, you know, have the mystery of, you know, who could be the one controlling the strings. You know, they don't do that. They make it clear who it is early on. So, yeah, weak, weak outside of costume villain in my mind. Uh, Uncle Abdullah is very weak. And piggybacking off that negative, this ties into the previous one that I just mentioned. Um, there was a lack of suspects in this episode. And that was mainly due to the fact that there's only one dude it could have been, and then it was Uncle Abdullah. Prince Abin was the one targeted, so obviously it wasn't going to be him, unless if it was some big elaborate plan to make him look like a victim. And there was nobody else in the episode. And because they revealed him as the villain early on, there's not even any mystique with that. They don't even try to hide it, hide it at all. So that yeah, there, there's no there's no suspects in the episode to point towards besides Uncle Abdullah. And they revealed Uncle Abdullah as the villain early on. So you already know who the villain is, and it's essentially just a game of catch up. You know, uh, throughout the episode because you're waiting for the gang to f figure it out as well. I found the mystery to be poorly executed in this episode. Now, you've heard, me, you've heard me say this, like, the past two episodes in a row now. That I found the mystery not executed well because of, you know, the, the, the engagement of it or the answers. Well, this time, there was engagement with it and there were good answers. My biggest issue was... They f fucking revealed the villains way too early on. That was the issue. I was like, dang, you had a good mystery. And you ruined it by revealing the villains way too early. Why? You had all the... That could have solved the, the, the villain problem. You know, the, the mystery problem and the villain problem. If they just didn't reveal the villains way too early on. Because that hindered the mystery. That essentially made it poorly executed because there was good ideas here. The mystery was just like, why is the, you know, who let the gin, evil gin out of the bottle? 
Why is the Jin wanting Prince Abed to leave? Why is he haunting the palace? What is he after? You know, there's so many great questions, and we get great answers in this episode, and the mystery is engaging throughout. The problem is, is the villains are revealed way too early on, so we get all the answers, and all that engagement is gone because we know who the villain is and why they're doing it, so there's no mystique left. There's no mystery and that's really such a shame because essentially we're just watching the gang playing catch up instead of the gang instead of being with the gang and following the clues and get and getting to the point where the mystery is about to be solved and we're going to get our answers we have the answers we're ahead of the gang we've gotten the answers now we're just waiting for the gang to get the answers and i think that's such a shame because this mystery had such good potential to be good but they squandered it by revealing the damn villains way too early. Had you just told off until the end of the episode, that could have really... It maybe wouldn't have helped the villain side of things, maybe. Maybe that still would have been weak, and the suspect thing wouldn't have been changed unless they had suspects. But it would have at least made this mystery great, and it could have bumped the episode a little bit higher. Had, you know, And it could have helped, you know, made it a little bit better... Had it not squandered, you know, the the great potential this mystery had by revealing the villains way too early on. So, yeah, I, I mean, the mystery was there. It had the potential to be such a great mystery. But once again, it fell flat, not because of being present, not being presented in an engaging way or, you know, being, uh, you know, not getting satisfying answers. No, it's just because they didn't. They revealed the villains way too early on in the episode, and there was no mis no, there was no mystique or mystery left. And despite the answers being good, and despite the mystery being engaging, we lose all sense of that because the villains are revealed way too early on, and there's no mystery and mystique left, and we're essentially just watching the gang play catch up. There were no clues in the episode whatsoever. After having the last episode where there was actually clues. They revert back to, once again, having no clues again. There was none at all, none to speak of. They never found any sort of clues that pointed towards Abdullah being the villain or the evil jinn. They just, I guess the closest thing was the the bottle in the lair, but that, that hardly qualifies as a clue at all. It's just, you know, something Velma's interested in. Like, oh, this is the bottle that the evil Jin was imprisoned in. I don't even know if she finds that out, you know, until Jeannie gets there or if she knows that ahead of time. But regardless, like, that doesn't change the fact that that's not really, like, a clue. It's just like, oh, he was just trapped in there. And yeah, somebody let him out. Like, yeah, we know that. That That's not really much of a clue. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I didn't really see any clues that pointed towards... Abdullah being the villain, probably because they revealed it way so early on that they figured, why even bother putting clues? Well, I'll tell you why. To actually have some fucking mystique. Because, like, without, you know, clues and a mystery, essentially an adventure at this point. And, and that's the main thing, is that this episode really feels more like a genie adventure with Scooby tagging along. And it lost, you know, the and it, and it squandered the potential mystery it has. Despite having mystery in the title, they squandered it, and there was and they didn't deliver on the mystery in Persia, and they had no clues with the mystery to help to help make it even better. So, yeah, you just end up with you know no you know a mystery that's squandered and poorly executed, and there being no clues to help point towards. Uh, a suspect or a motive nothing at all and finally to end off my list of negatives the final negative that i have is that i found the atmos the atmosphere of the episode to be dull and non-existent in this episode mainly due to the fact that despite the unique and fresh setting that i said earlier and despite me liking the setting of the episode there wasn't really anything in the setting that provided any sort of tension or suspense or creepiness or eeriness it also doesn't help that the villains were also very dull to, due to their weak nature. You know, they made it. They the villains made the atmosphere dull due to them being very weak and not being much of a threat. So when you have weak villains 
and a setting that doesn't really have that is good but doesn't have anything in the setting that really makes it te tension or suspenseful or creepiness or eeriness you're left with a dull and non-existent atmosphere so there was definitely potential to have some sort of atmosphere you know but they just didn't really capitalize on it so yeah the atmosphere was very dull very non-existent felt no tension or suspense at all through the episode or any sort of creepiness or eeriness Overall, guys, I would recommend this episode to fans and newcomers of the show. This was really tough because I found it an average and decent episode. I was like, yeah, it's okay. It's fine. It's not the best episode in the world, but it's not the worst. I think why I recommend it is because while it has a lot of bad in it, there are a lot of good and fun moments in the episode. And if you can get past the problems and issues of it, you can find some enjoyment in it. I think it is, you know... An interesting crossover that has some fun moments in it. And if you're a Genie and Babu fan or just a Genie fan, you know, you'll probably like this, you know, little crossover episode. If you're a Hanna-Barbera fan, you might even like this episode. Um, but yeah, I mean, as far as Scooby-Doo episodes go, it's not necessarily a good episode. And it's not, but it's not necessarily a bad episode either. It's just, it's okay, it's fine, it's decent. It has a lot of fun and good things in it. But it's definitely not one of the best episodes in the new Scooby movies. I just personally would recommend it because I would recommend, like, at least giving it a shot, you know, for any newcomers. And for fans, you know, why not, you know, give it a rewatch and see if maybe you come to the same conclusion as me. Or, you know, it still has its fun moments, you know, it's still somewhat enjoyable so you know like the Josie episode I think there is enjoyable aspects to it maybe not as enjoyable as Josie and the Pussycats as episode but still some enjoyment in it and if you like I said if you get past the issues or if you and you just go along for the ride I think you can have fun with it I think you can enjoy it it just depends on what mindset you're you know you have for it and what what you're expecting out of the episode don't go into this episode expecting it to be really good just you just go into it thinking this is an average and decent episode that, you know, provides a interesting Hanna-Barbera crossover between two different properties, but is nothing more than really a, cu a curious uh, piece of media for Scooby and Genie and Babu fans. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the review. Please give a like if you did. Comment down below your thoughts on the episode. Do you like this episode? Do you think I'm being, you know, not being as positive as I could be? Do you see more, you know, good in it than I do? Do you hate this episode? I'd be interested in that as well. You know, do you not find this episode that great? You know, do you see more problems with, with it than I do? Or are you somewhere in the middle like me where you just think it's okay, it's average, it's middle of the road, but it's nothing to ride home about. It has its fun moments in it. And maybe on a certain day, if you feel like it, you could... You could watch it if you're a Hanna-Barbera or Genie and Babu fan along as well as a Scooby-Doo fan. But it's not, you know, the best episode in the world. I'm curious for your thoughts, so let me know. And subscribe for more Scooby-Doo content like this. Or if you're just interested in any of my other content, obviously I'll have more Scooby-Doo content on the way for my Halloween special. And going forward, because Scooby-Doo is the focus of my channel and is, you know, the thing I'm most passionate about. And I will continue doing more Scooby and be talking about more Scooby down the line. So I will not be stopping anytime soon. So if you love Scooby and you love talking about Scooby and you want to see, like, you know, shows and movies and games and books that aren't talked about, you know, by a lot of other people, then come join this channel because I hope to, to cover all pieces of Scooby-Doo media, not just, you know, the popular stuff. In my next video, I will continue my 2024 Halloween special with a review of Season 2, Episode 4 of the new Scooby-Doo movies, titled The Spirit Spooked Sports Show, guest starring Tim Conway. This is an episode that I am not very familiar with. I haven't seen in quite a long... Well, I am familiar with it. It's just, like, I haven't seen it in a long time, and... I'm not sure what to expect out of it. I don't know how it's going to work. You know how it's going to be. Um, hopefully, we will get a good, uh, finally a good episode. I think fans have liked this episode. I've heard some good praise for it here and there. And I've heard of Tim Conway before, so it'll be interesting. This is our first, uh, you know, well, actually, technically our second 
I, I would consider him the first celebrity guest star of season two of the new Scooby Doo movies. Exclu you know, because the Harlem Globetrotters, you know, they're the animated. That's their animated counterparts, and Josie is as well as Genie and Babu. This is the first one where Tim Conway, yeah, he's animated, but he had no animated show at all. At least not that I'm aware of, but we'll get on to that, you know, in the next review. But yeah, if you're interested in my thoughts on the Tim Conway episode, and if we'll finally, you know, break the streak of mid-episodes and get a good episode, or if we'll get a shitty bad episode, I have no clue. But we'll see, and I'll be interested to see if this episode will break the mold or will continue the trend of a, a mid-season and a uh, streak of four mid-episodes. We'll see, but if you want to know my thoughts on Season 2, Episode 4 of the new scooby -Doo movies with Tim, with uh, Tim, um, specifically the Tim Conway episode... You can check that out uh, next Saturday. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, peace out. Yeah.